Episode 12 of No Choice But To Remember It. Music Memories. Music Murder. Lucy Cooper's Letter. Hey, Roxy. Uh, how you been? It's been long since we've seen each other, hasn't it? It's Lucy Cooper. I hope you know that, though. Don't think you'd forget me that easily. Was the last time we talked in, what, like, late September last year? That close to, what, five, six months without us talking? But I get it. We've both been busy. But enough of the small talk. You probably already know what this is about. Remember how I wanted to bring the band back together? Well, I'm afraid that... Okay, this is gonna sound a bit weird saying, so... Let me give you some context first. Obviously, I thought it would be a fun idea to get together the band we had in college again. Not like anyone was a big fan or anything, but a handful of people would like to see us again, so I thought it would be fun. I mean, we've all grown past our death metal band, gotten better at music, or found a new hobby, but still, for the memories. I talked to you about it, obviously, (laughs) and I talked to Marcus about it as well. He said he thought it would be fun, and I talked a little to Sally as well. Then came Jamie and Wilfred. Luckily for me, it was easy to contact them both, because unlike us, they stayed together. Shared the same job, house, with a few others as well, but I didn't talk to them, and they actually lived near me. So, of course we met at a local coffee shop. Wilfred was all caught up in work, so it was just me and Jamie there. He's a writer now. Well, not really, but you know that library on 25th Street? The really big one that almost everyone who's read a book has dreamed at one point in their life to work at. Yeah, not only does he work there, but he's in the writer's room. I know, right? Come on. Roxy, I know that at one point you've dreamed of being there. Making ideas for books without the full responsibility and dedication to write the whole thing? It's a dream come true. He even confirmed that they didn't check your uniform. But I'm sure that you know that I wouldn't be contacting you if it ended there. We didn't talk too much about his job when we sat down, but I was really interested in it. I asked if he could one day let me in to get a peek inside. And he laughed nervously and said, maybe. I didn't mention his work after that. But he said that he'd be down to do a gig again. Obviously, you know that Sally and Marcus couldn't come. And you couldn't either. But at that point, I had already booked the gig. I had to write a few new songs. I mean, we only had it out there for 30 minutes. But there's only so many of our old songs that could work with one singer and pianist. But we had it all planned out. And soon the day came. I was driving, going to pick him up from work. And I did. Wilfred was doing something else that day. But Jamie was acting odd when I picked him up. Looking around like he was looking for something. I asked him what was wrong. I mean, I was nervous too, obviously. I mean, we didn't have our guitarist. And it was kind of hard to do heavy metal with a piano. But... We made sure to pick up the songs that translated best on the piano, and to write two new ones. But, of course, I was nervous, even with all of the preparation. But he didn't seem like a stage fright nervous. He said that he was fine, and we drove the rest of the way there in silence. When we got there, we did our usual preparations. We didn't have much time to rehearse together, but he knows how the beat goes, and I know how to play it well, so... It should be fine. It should have been fine. Was it fine? I mean, nothing, well, I'm sure you heard of it in the news, but I'll retell it to you anyways. It's not like they got the information right anyway. So I took out my keyboard and Jamie went to the mic and we started to sing our first song, a classic, The Murder With Music. The lyrics started going and he sang. Then murder with music. We're doing music murder. When you ask what we're singing, I'll say it's a killer so you can take it. And you can't take it. 
because the music is killing, killing you, killing everyone. At that part, my fear got the best of me. Seeing everyone stare at me, I didn't even mess up at playing, I just stopped. Frozen, and Jamie kept singing. And everyone looked at him. It was almost lonely. Every eye I saw went to him. I don't think it was the right people listening. Obviously, a much more famous person was supposed to be singing here today, but they couldn't come. How else would have we gotten this? And people looked annoyed when we walked out. But now? I think it's similar. My nervousness turned to fear. Soul-crushing fear. And their annoyance, it turned to madness. That's when it happened. On the chorus of the song. When Jamie was loud and yelling. That's when it's your time. Your time to do murder. The music that beats through our hearts through us, it causes the murder. And then the room was empty. They were wrong. Everyone's saying someone brought a knife and when everyone tried to fight back, they died eventually getting the killer but dying in the process. They said that the musicians fled because the person with the knife was coming for them. But they were wrong. There was no knife. And there was no slow death. And Jamie kept singing till they were all gone. The few people that liked the song were the first, till the madness overtook the rest so much that they had all ripped each other's guts out. Then it was silent, dead silence. And the phrase has never been more true. The lifeless, bloody husk looked like a photograph none moving and the worst part is after singing I could move and I wasn't frozen scared I was just nervous it grew obviously but not as much as before I looked at Jamie Jamie looked vaguely confused and really interested but not worried he looked at me he stuttered saying that it was something and then sighed and asked if I knew an answer? <laughs> the answer! I didn't know what he was talking about. I shook my head and walked off. He didn't seem happy to kill those people. Definitely don't think I'm saying that, but he just looked tired and not surprised. And not that I can say that he even did kill those people, I mean. He was just there. So to everyone else, well, what would I say? He magically made people super angry or super scared? Maybe he enhances people's feelings or something, but <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. I'm not sure what to do. Music memories led to music murder. That should be a name of a song.